Materials in Optional Materials, organized by PG Department of Chemistry. It only takes one person to make another feel welcome and special. Now, I would like to call Aspar TK from First BSc Chemistry to introduce our esteemed chief guest who have connected with us virtually. Some people dream of success while other people get up every morning and make it happen, says Wine Hazenga. A pleasant good afternoon to everyone who are present in meeting. It's my honor and privilege to introduce Dr. Sivakumar Vaisyanathan Seth. Associate Professor, Department of Chemistry, Institute of Technology, Rorkela. Sir has completed Bachelor of Science Chemistry in the year 2000 with first class at Mudzurangam Government Arts College, Bellur. And he pursued Master of Science Chemistry in the year 2002 with first class in the same Mudzurangam Government Arts College, Bellur. And he further, Sir has completed his PhD under the guidance of Professor UB Maradharaj said, Material Science Research Center and Department of Chemistry, Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Madras. Sad PhD thesis is titled as Investigation of Rare Earth Luminescence in Mixed Metal Oxides and Silicate. Sad has 20 years of teaching and research experience. Sad has started his career as a guest lecturer in Mutharangam Government Arts College, Vellur, from July 2002 to September 2002. Sir was a research fellow at Center for Electrochemical and Energy Division, Speak Science Foundation, Chennai from October 2002 to May 2003. Sir worked at Orchid Chemical and Pharmaceuticals Limited, Chennai from June 2003 to August 2003 as synthetic chemist. Sir was a project associate IIT Madras from September 2003 to December 2003. And Sir was a junior research fellow IIT Madras from Jan 2004 to December 2005. Sir received his postdoctoral fellowship, Korea Advanced Institute of Science Technology, South Korea, during the period of April 2007 to March 2009. Also, Sir was CSIR senior research fellow IIT Madras from Jan 2006 to March 2007. Sir was a CEA postdoctoral researcher, CEA Sackley, France, from April 2009 to April 2010. Sir was a lecturer, Department of Chemistry, NIT Calicut, India, from July 2010 to May 2011. Sir was an Inspire Faculty Fellow, Department of Chemistry, NIT Rorkela, India, from Jan 13 to December 2017. Sir worked at Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, NIT Rorkela, India, from September 2011 to February 2018. Then Sar was promoted to Associate Professor, Department of Chemistry and IT Rorkela, India, from February 2018 to till date. Dr. Sivakumar Vaidhinathan Sar has received many distinctions, awards, and honors. Some of them are SERB International Research Experience Fellowship, ICCD Appreciation, Review Editor, Foreign Tires in Photonics, 2022 onwards. Editorial board member for Journal of Materials Science and Nanomaterials Scientific Publishers. Sir has received four Best Poster Award from recognized institutions like IICT, Hyderabad, Nagpur, etc. Sir has received Appreciation Award for his oral presentation from Nagpur University. Sir has received Inspire Faculty Fellowship Award from Inspire DST Government of India on August 2012. Sir has received DAE Young Scientist Award, Government of India, in June 2012. Sir cleared graduate aptitude test for engineering, gate, and secured 91.66 percentage. 
Sir received state merit scholarship during the period of 1997 to 2002 for his undergraduate and postgraduate courses, and his awards and honors are many to go. Sir has published 92 journals, 89 international journals, and three national journals. Sir has attended 65 conference proceedings. Sir has given eight oral presentations in international conference and workshop in countries like USA, France, Korea, Singapore, Poland, and India. Sir has done research in many areas like organic materials for electronic applications, dye containing molecular complexes for single molecular magnets, lanthanide containing molecular complexes, bipolar, blue molecular materials for organic light aging diode, synthesis of pure organic room temperature, phosphorescence materials, molecular designing of IR dendrimers for folates, boron containing fluorophores, heavy metal autumn awesome, free pure organic, new phosphor and nano quantum dots materials for lighting display applications. SAR guided six PhD students, 17 MS students, and 11 integrated MS students. SAR is a member in professional bodies like Luminescent Society of India, LSI Life Member, Chemical Research Society of India, CSRI Life Member, Materials Research Society of India, MSRI Life Member. SAR has been invited as a guest lecturer in many recognized institutions and universities. SAR has done many sponsored projects from various sponsoring agencies like DAE, DST, TEQIP, Inspire, DRDO, SERB, CSIR, CGR. SAR has organized many short-term courses, conference organized in National Institute of Technology, Rorkela. SAR has many more to achieve in future. SAR is a passionate person with vast knowledge and experience in field of chemistry. We are very glad and privileged to have such a person to share a session with us, sir. I would like to gratitude you for giving a wonderful opportunity to say some achievements of passionate person, Dr. Sivakumar Vaithinathan, sir. Welcome you, sir. Thank you for your nice introduction, Afsa. I was thinking that you will complete the talk one hour <laughs> writing my biodata, but fortunately you are completed well in time. So thank you so much. Uh, Anuja, thank you for your uh, session. Thank you, sir. And, um, and I, it is also a great, great privilege to meet one of our uh, you know classmate, uh, Dr. Shakila. Uh, we studied together. Thank you, Valimadhi. Uh, MSc Chemistry at Mudurangam Government Arts College. So it's very great pleasure. Then when she invited, I was very happy to, you know, share our knowledge to uh, your institute. Thank you so much. Thank you for so let me go to, the, to our college. Yeah, thank you so much. So okay. let me uh, talk with our, uh, let me share my slides. Ah, yes, sir. Yeah. Hopefully that is visible to everyone. Yes, sir. It is visible. So I'm really great privilege to, you know, talk about this. Uh, uh, I think someone has to admit who are coming. So I will do it. Sir. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, so bring it down. Yes. Okay. So thank you. Uh, let me start my presentation. So today I'm going to talk about uh, functional materials that are applicable uh, in light emitting diodes. So I will try to cover uh, uh, both organic light emitting diodes as well as inorganic light emitting diodes. Because recently I moved to uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Hyderabad, a few weeks, uh, I mean, one week ago. So most of the work that I've been done, it is, uh, it's like uh, done in NIT Raurkela. Just I use the IIT emblem here. So, so this is the, you know, whenever we go uh, some talk, uh, we always uh, try to say our buildings. Uh, let's say we have an administrative building which is very nicely uh, located uh, away from the city. And uh, very fortunately, uh, we have uh, got our uh, uh, new building. Uh, which is around G plus five, that means ground floor plus five floor. 
and um, it looks like a periodic table one can realize that uh, you know uh, this is a these twos are you know let me get my laser so these twos are lanthanides and actinides you have s block p blocks and d blocks and then uh, my office is located somewhere around here in the third room uh, you can see in the top of this uh, building so we have a two years msc program uh, they have uh, need to be qualified jab uh, this joint admission for master's degree then you have a recently uh, we have started btec in industrial chemistry so these kids should come from up to uh, 12th grade they are supposed to appear for the je exam and then they can admit in industrial chemistry this course is very unique course where a lot of uh, you know industrial oriented chemistry has been taught here with this introduction i can go to the next slide so i request uh, people don't you know mark it in the screen then this is the research that i am doing in opto electronics laboratory so we consider uh, materials uh, that is used for leds so there are several parts of you know material that we know so let's say inorganic phosphorus is a basically a ceramic material like alumina let's say for example al2o3 uh, calcium oxide uh, you have a ca calcium tungstate cawo4 etc by using this lanthanides can be you know incorporated few percentage then one can able to have these uh, you know uh, kind of colors that we can you know uh, get it then you have some nano material that can also be used as a materials for the alternative material for light emitting diodes and we also work on very vigorously organic fluorophores for blue emitter emitters for organic light emitting diodes the device that has been made you can see here in our material how it is glowing and in other in interesting area that we are you know working on is that room temperature phosphorescence we all know that the watch dial uh, watch dial you have um, you know uh, so in watch dial you have a um, uh, green color always you have uh, you know we can um, uh, we can see in the um, uh, in the night time it, it glows uh, you know green color because almost it glows 12 hours which is nothing but a strontium aluminate which is doped with the europium 2 plus ion and europium 2 plus plus um, uh, dysprosium 3 plus ion so basically what happened uh, the green color comes from 4f 5d electronic transition of europium 2 plus ion okay when it comes to the ground state it emits photon in the in the form of light uh, it emits light in the form of green photon and it been delayed by you know you know uh, the semiconductor basic semiconductor concept right you have hole electron hole and electron which recombine and produce light right so in this case the the holes that has been left over when the electrons promoted from the one state to the other state the holes have been left over the holes can be trapped by using this dysprosium 3 plus ion so slowly it releases when it slowly releases the electron comes slowly from the excited state to the ground state by combination of this one can able to get a photon but in case of organic molecule it's very tough because the inter system crossing from s1 to t1 is not allowed okay so we need to have you know we need to have um you know s1 to t1 uh, the we need to have a heavy metal ion that can you know give uh, some kind of s1 to t1 relaxation right but uh, that is not possible if you have a organic semiconductors purely organic molecule like let's say carbon uh, carbon containing carbon hydrogen oxygen containing material so one need to do you need to incorporate a true atom you know you have a zz rule you might have studied in msc that you have a n to pi star transition or pi to pi star transition with have different spin multiplicity 
that can be possible one can harvest the s1 to t1 is possible so in that case you can see that under you know uv lamp it is showing blue color when you switch up the light it shows yellow color that means the phosphorescence is the you know uh, delayed emission so it gives few seconds we can able to see the uh, you know uh, in the nac dye but there are long way to go to you know enlarge the uh, timing but we also work on european 3 plus complexes we make this type of charge transfer complexes which can coordinated with the european 3 plus ion basically a coordinated complexes and you directly apply to the led in the top of the led commercial led one can produce multiple color uh, basically you can have uh, red blue uh, white etc based on the emission which comes from the european complexes what we also work on the pure organic molecule pure organic molecule which can emit yellow color can we combine with the yellow uh, with a with a blue led one can make a white this is also we can uh, we are working on it there are a few years back we used to work on iridium and platinum complexes can be used for the oled application okay so the next one so i'm talking about the uh, now we are going to cover only the photoluminescent and electroluminescent the luminescent is the emission of light as a result of excite of atoms by energy any molecular system that emits light with the form of photon it's called luminescence there are two types of you know luminescence that we are going to discuss here one is the photon is responsible for getting a photo a luminescence that is called photoluminescence if the high energy electrons are responsible then we call it as the electroluminescence the basic difference has been given here the photoluminescence can be explained by using jablonski diagram in the jablonski diagram any molecular system which absorb the uv photon goes to the excited state and then it comes to the s1 state and then emission start from s1 state to s0 and this is the casas rule you might have studied what casas rule says that whatever may be the excitation but the emission start from the highest first level of uh, you know spin uh, electronic level that means the emission comes from s1 to s0 not from s2 to s0 there are some exception cases where s2 to s0 is also uh, known but it is called anti casas rule uh, you know emission follows the anti casas rule it is also possible there is a intersystem crossing from s1 to t1 state then the emission photon comes from the t1 stage to s0 which what we call it as phosphorescence the only difference between the fluorescence and phosphorescence is the lifetime for example you have a, in your in your home you have a tube light you switch on the tube light it glows right when you switch up there is a glow uh, when you after switching up the light also you have a glow right so that there you can see that uh, uh, there is a delayed emission that we call it as phosphorescence but in your inorganic case we can call it as a long after glow but whereas in the in organic we call it as phosphorescence okay i hope you are clear with the photoluminescence now we are going to the electroluminescence the electroluminescence we already study the n type p type semiconductor you have a n type p type semiconductor we connect when you you know charge the device when the hole in electron moves to the deflection layer where the deflection layer hole and electron recombine or the exciton recombination occurs in this zone you get a emission okay but coming to the organic light emitting diodes in in case of organic light emitting diodes you have a glass substrate in that top of that you have both electrodes the emission layer that is organic molecule is sandwiched between these two electrodes okay so when you uh, do the circuit i mean uh, there is a hole in electron recombination occurs in the emission layer then you can able to get the photon which is penetrated with the glass substrate we can able to see so this is the basic difference between the electroluminescent and photoluminescent here photoluminescent is the photon is the responsible source to get a luminescence whereas in electroluminescent high energy electrons are responsible to get a electroluminescence 
So you can see that in order to get emission from the OLED device, you need to have a multiple uh, electrodes and their layers. One is cathode, electron injection layer, electron transport layer, organic layer, that is the emissive layer. Then you have a whole transporting layer. You have a whole injection layer. You have anode, then you have a glass substrate. Now, when you switch on the device, the hole and electron recombine, the emission produced in the organic layer. That means the electron and hole being injected in the subsequent electrodes, then it moves towards the organic layer, then you get an emission. Okay. And there are several examples that one can see the application of this OLED because of this thinner, lighter, and flexible. And in addition, it also consumes less power. One can have a wide viewing angle. For example, in the airports, you can see that the flexible displays has been given here. Even these Android phones, everything, the displays comes from OLED device. You can also see that there are transparent uh, OLED one can have. You can see them in, in those who are sitting uh, you know, next to your OLED device, any display device. It is also possible to light up the uh, a big room that is cannot be possible in your LED system in, in inorganic LED because these materials can be screen printed. One can have a large area display that is possible in case of OLED. Okay, so this slide shows that the generation of uh, OLEDs, so you can see here, this is the first generation OLED, second generation and third generation. The first generation OLED has been discovered uh, by Tanvik for the Kodak company, the, the camera that has been used for that company, this fluorescent OLED has been discovered. When you see this previous, uh, you know, uh, uh, thing where the photoluminescence, when we explain, we say that the number of photons that is in the ground state, it goes completely to the singlet excited state. That the under percentage photon, I mean this, it has singlet state. Okay. It never goes from the S0 to T1 or Tn. Okay. Whereas in case of, uh, you know, electroluminescence, okay, in case of electroluminescence, you have, uh, according to spin statistics, you have three of them is, you know, T1 and one of them is S1. Suppose if I use only fluorescent molecule containing only carbon and hydrogen, okay, very conjugated molecule, let's say triphenylamine or anthracene, etc. Okay, but we know that it doesn't contain any heavy metal ion. So that means whatever it is there in the T1 state cannot be taken to the S0 state. That means completely this state is negligible. Whereas the singlet state electrons can come to the ground state. That means only 100% of the exciton, that means 3, 1, one third, uh, one fourth can come to the ground state by emitting photon. That means the internal quantum efficiency is restricted to 25%. The efficiency is low and so the lifetime is reasonable. But still, people are using for the blue, the fluorescent material. The, in, the, uh, in the 20 years back, in the 2000, second generous OLED has been discovered. As I already told you, that a heavy metal ion, if it is present in the molecule, that can harvest the triplet energy to the ground state. That means here they, they use the platinum or ruthenium complexes, sorry, platinum or iridium complexes to harvest this uh, to the ground state. So that means one can able to harvest this energy to the ground state. That means the one can get the internal quantum efficiency. It can be 100 percentage. It shows high efficiency, long lifetime, high cost and heavy metal ion present, which can be toxic and pricey in nature, which restricted to use the second generation OLED in a commercial manner. Okay, very recently, a few years back, Professor Adachi has come up with an idea 
if you have s1 t1 state it will be marginally less gap that means less than 0.3 electron volt that means the the room temperature is sufficient to harvest this energy to this s1 state <coughs> by reverse intersystem crossing so when you go from s1 to t1 is called intersystem crossing when you go from tn to sn that means t1 to s1 it's called reverse intersystem crossing so that means basically one can get the internal quantum efficiency 100% the efficiency can be high enough short lifetime for blue no heavy metal ion is involved and special molecular design is required to get a uh, desired property that means blue is always a problem in case of all the cases of first generation second generation and third generation so blue blue is the biggest problem in the market okay as i have told you the first generation oled been discovered by tang and van vlick for the kodak company in 1991 and they said that uh, the first generation oled singlet the spin antisymmetric shows that it is only giving 25 percentage whereas the 75 percentage is ghost as a base so they used alq3 as a emitter and then they could able to fabricate this uh, you know device that they could get get the internal quantum efficiency 25 percent whereas the external quantum efficiency is 5 percent the formula to collect this external quantum efficiency maximum is it nr eta r is the radiative trans uh, transition yeah eta st is the singlet triplet efficiency and pl quantum mill and then out coupling effect because it has optics so we need to see that out coupling effect of this okay these are the fluorescent molecule that has been discovered uh, in the in the literature we can see there are donor acceptor molecules have been given here the electron rich triphenyl amine can be used as a donor the uh, electron deficient imidazole ring can be used for uh, you know uh, as a uh, electron transporting material or the donor acceptor this can be a donor this can be acceptor so more or less you will be able to get only so around 5 percentage you get <coughs> so only 5 percentage is restricted so the limitation of this external quantum efficiency is very very rare for example here the triphenyl amine is directly connected to the imidazole ring you get a efficiency of 0.65 percent the moment you put one phenyl ring inside or benzene ring in between this donor and acceptor the external quantum efficiency is improved drastically from 0.65 to 3.08 okay so there are many cases where it kind of uh, uh, device architecture or the design strategy one can able to use to get a deep blue emission the only disadvantage is that the internal quantum efficiency is limited to 25 percent deactivation of the triplet exciton is not possible by having simple organic molecule so that you don't have any heavy metal ion and hence one cannot harvest the 75 percentage of the triplet state to the ground state okay so that's a, that's a thing that you you don't you know consider this as a efficient material okay so the next concentration material has been discovered by Mark Thompson as a chemist, SR Frost uh, from Princeton University. He has an uh, electrical engineer. With this combination, they could able to get that he is an expert in you know, platinum complex coordination chemistry. So he has he brought this knowledge of heavy metal ion effect. So they could able to generate the 100 percentage internal quantum efficiency. And the disadvantage of this is low reliability, uh, reliability in the blue region more expensive and controlled of uh, control of the dopant concentration ph already that means phosphorescence already suffer from sharp efficiency roll up at brightness either. so when you increase the voltage that the the efficiency drop it is coming down so that's the disadvantage one can have also the heavy metal ion is very expensive uh, that is also one of the uh, key that uh, this this cannot be used for practical application even though the green color they are using but still and blue and red is needed uh, some discovery okay so come to uh, third generation oled 
where uh, the people are using uh, you know uh, uh, the delayed fluorescence concept of course uh, parker et al uh, reported the first tadf in pure organic molecule in isoin uh, in 1961 this is the molecule that we can see here in 1961 e type of uh, fluorescence has been uh, discovered that is called delayed fluorescence so the external quantum efficiency been calculated the outcoupling is 0.2 the pl quantum yield is 1 and eta radiator transition is 1 and singular triplet transition can be possible 100 percentage so and hence one can able to get the external quantum efficiency 20 percentage okay so as i already mentioned that he has used tin farfarin complexes to harvest this triplet state to the singlet state reverse intersystem crossing so they could able to get the internal quantum efficiency 100 percent the efficiency is higher and there are no involvement in the heavy metal ions are uh, present in this type of fluorescent molecule okay these are all the advantage that one can able to talk but can we have disadvantage of this material that is correct so blue is very difficult here again tadf method suffers from serious rolling of eye current that means blue is a serious problem. So we need to, you know, get this uh, blue material. Uh, uh, that's the reason we started because uh, the blue LED, uh, blue OLED is not only used for, you know, to produce full color display. It has also been used for the white OLED because blue and red and the, um, green combination, one can able to get a white light. So blue also can be used as a host material to accommodate green and red emission. So till then, the efficient red and green emitters has been reported. The production of blue emitting is difficult due to the wide band gap because we know that E is equal to SC by lambda where uh, the band gap around um, the emission, if you take 600, so 1 to 3, 6 by 600, it comes around 2.1 electron volt around. So that is also very difficult. And it is less, less stable and deterioration of blue color upon excitation. That means these all need to be considered. And in addition, there are uh, certain national television standard committee given the XY value. That means the color that has been given uh, because the color, the moment you see the color, it is also involved your eyesight. Okay. Human, sense, human sensitivity curve, human side sensitivity curve which we correlate and make in a two platform that is x y the z is understood the x value is 0.1014 y value is 0 0.08 the remaining is going to be your uh, z value and it should be equal to one wherever you take so the, the european broadcast unit also given some value that is y value is 0 0.06 whereas this one is 0 0.08 okay so that means we need to get the y value this also the external quantum efficiency should be good enough so what are all the white that we can call it as a good white cri if i take sunlight okay in the daytime which is 100 percentage you take it as a 100 percentage okay so when we uh, our light inside light if you see how much it is coming so that comparison you do between these two, okay. If it is CRI is zero, then it's very poor, zero to 55. 60 to 85, it is good. And 90 to 100, it is excellent. For example, in the day-night match cricket ground or any athletics game in the night time when you wanted to do, you should have almost greater than 95 percentage of your CRI value. And hence one can able to use them uh, in the stadium. Okay. So this is uh, our material that we, you know, incorporated our blue and then made some device with the help of Taiwan group. So we can able to see this as some 75 percentage of uh, CRI. So there are, uh, there are many uh, material that is available. What could be the strategy that one can able to follow to fulfill this? For example, you have a unipolar material which consists of either active acceptor or uh, you know or donor alone, and which connected through 
spacer pi spacer with a luminophore or without pi spacer with a luminophore. This type of bond equal. Okay. But you have a donor acceptor which connected with either pi or without pi. This type of bond equal. If you have a unipolar, okay, only acceptor or only donor, then the, the depletion layer, that means the recombination zone, it will be very restricted. Okay, either its side, this side. Okay. But when you do here, when you have a bipolar material, the width of the recombination zone is expanded. Okay. And hence, one can able to have more number of exciton can recombine, produce light. So that's a, a simple idea. So we summarize in this journal, Journal of Metal Chemistry C. Okay, we are now trying to again make a, some kind of you know classification with a phenothrylin ring and then put a lot of effort to make these some conjugations with electron donating and electron withdrawing groups and try to make some summary here. These are the material that has been made in our laboratory. You can see a lot of material which is a combination of carbazole, a triphenylamine, and then we, with spacer, without spacer, meta connectivity, para connectivity, etc. So we could be able to get 5.7 external quantum efficiency, which is highest. These are the two papers that I'm going to discuss with you. The combination of the triphenylamine with the phenothroimidazole in the meta connectivity, how it gets. The similarly, you can use them with the substitute of CF3 group and use them as a white LED also. So these two things I'm going to discuss. This is the phenothrimidazole and benzimidazole. We get a connected the triphenylamine in this fashion. So get a near UV or deep blue emission. Also reduce the direct combination between donor acceptor molecule. Because if there is an alignment in this fashion, there is a transfer of electron in this fashion. But if you have restricted the communication, so you will get a uh, better results. So even though we get in the previous one, uh, you know, 0 0.05, uh, like we can improve this by having meta connectivity. So in that case, we synthesized meta connectivity and para connectivity. Para connectivity is having less, but in meta connectivity, you get a good number. And then you have a cyclic voltammetry, which has been used to calculate highest occupied molecular orbital as well as lowest unoccupied molecular orbital values. And the TGA has been used to you know, find out uh, whether these materials are stable because uh, when we are using this one for the vacuum deposition, your material should be stable. If it is you know, destroyed, then one cannot you know, use them in OLED. Most of the time we don't get the crystal. So what we do is that we optimize the geometry by using DFT density functional theory. And we also, you know, execute this uh, and then try to get a homo lumo gap, how the electron density is occurs. We can see the donation is from triphenylamine. Acceptance is coming from in the phenothrylin ring here. So in the D gas phase and DCM solution phase, one can able to mimic the U visible spectrum. We can get an idea where it can be located. So in case of photoluminescence, it shows all of them is showing a blue color. The CI color coordinates also shows the 0 0.06, 0 0.07, etc. the Y value. In the solution is very, very, very narrow. It is around 0 0.03, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, which is very fantastic value. The lifetime varies from 1.66 to 1.93 nanosecond because these fluorescent molecules are, you know, uh, molecules are fluorescent and hence the lifetime is less. PL quantum is around comes around 60 to 80 percentage. So by, by using this type of uh, you know architecture, we, we build the device with the electrode, cathode, and anode. We put out the blue material here. We try to use them, these all the you know material in the subsequent layer, whole injection layer, electron transport layer, etc. What we found is that the electroluminescence shows very deep. Uh, blue emission or UV emission, we get the CA color coordinates is 0 0.02. It's very, very, very rare reported in the literature. 
by using this, we incorporated our iridium material and we tried to get a white. We found that it shows 0.33 and 0.37. The external quantum efficiency around 12 percentage, which is very unique value. We could able to publish this work in ASS applied electronic material in American Chemical Society. The next one is this, how to get a 5 percentage value because we got the fine zero two. So we, we played with the connectivity and made CF3. So next one is reverse intersystem crossing, TADF material. So as I mentioned, T1 to S1, we need to harvest the energy. In this concept, with TADF source, most promising, promising and efficient approach to harvest the triplet exciton, which involve reverse intersystem crossing, reverse intersystem crossing process. And the S1 T1 gap supposed to be 0 0.3 uh, electron volt, less than 0 0.3 electron volt. That means the, the value is supposed to be very closer. So it can be 0 0.03, 003, it will be very, very good for you. Okay. So this can be achieved. We should have a least overlap between HOMO and LUMO. That is spatial diff separation of electron density is necessary. That can be only possible to have a twisted donor acceptor structure, which has a large steric hindrance can also cause uh, twisted in donor acceptor structure. There are two things which we need to concentrate. Separation of homolumo, which is supposed to be get a small delta HT value. Introduction of, uh, introduction of uh, you know, uh, steric hindrance, spiral linkers, the except molecular structure, multiple resonance effect. So you have ON, OS, et cetera, that is also can create this type of less delta HT value. <clears throat> Increasing the rate of uh, luminescence, rate of radiation, that is increasing the overlap density distribution between the S0 and S1 state, large delocalization of molecular orbital. The key is moderate KR, small delta ST. The method is to use donor acceptor backbone. These are the literature, you know, combination donor pi acceptor, acceptor donor acceptor, donor acceptor donor, donor acceptor donor acceptor. These are the things people are looking for in this. <coughs> so you can see here the sulfone based compound, which is a combination with the uh, triphenylamine, uh, diphenylamine, and then carbosol linkage, O linkage and tertiary butyl group, even the pridin moiety incorporated. This is all the literature that has been available. You can see this action quantum efficiency is more than 5%, 9.9, 14.5, 31.9. 19.5. So it's very promising results that one can able to see. It's also possible to connect the acceptor, acceptor, uh, acceptor, donor, acceptor, donor, acceptor, donor, acceptor, donor. This type of linear and cyclic structure. In case of cyclic structure, you get an external quantum efficiency higher, whereas the linear structure, which has 6.9%. So this is also a very interesting thing that one need to consider. Okay. So these are the, some few other examples which has a multiple resonance. So this is also good, uh, showing very good emission. So we can see at 20%, 27, 26, this is all the quite number, good, good number. So I'm going to discuss about our work. So we took uh, this kind of keto molecule. We put in order to fine tune the band gap, we put one benzene ring, two methyl group, one cyanide. and um, the electron withdrawing groups, cyanide and carbonyl, suppress the geometrical chain. The electron donating group, carbonyl group, break molecular symmetry. Molecular geometry, that is this type of, you know, one, one, one is to two is to one. So you get a twisted acceptor core, which separate the electron density. What we did is that this is your combination, right? So you have a two methyl, one cyanide. What we thought, we put only cyanide. Cyanide methyl combination, only cyanide or cyanide uh, without cyanide, two methyl group, two methyl group and one cyanide. But we found this is the optimal structure one can have to get a better luminescence. So we can also see here the S1 T1 T2 gap is 0.1, S1 T2 gap is 0 0.03 here. So which is very interesting. So get a blue emission in the solution, thin film solid. 
the solvent effect shows the ICT character. There is the intramolecular charge transfer is occurring. Okay, when you make the device, what we found is that it's showing 13.9 percentage external quantum efficiency. When you move for white, it shows the 9 percentage and but 0 0.33, 0 0.33 we got. Next, we go to the yellow emitter. Simply you change carbazole to thiosin, uh, you know, uh, phenoxazine and phenothiazin, NS and NO group. What we found is both of them giving green and yellow color. So, which is very interesting. So, but if you can see the S1 T1 gap is here 0 0.0015, but here S1 T1 gap is 0 0.06, which is also very interesting values one can see. So, in solution and thin film, it's showing uh, some kind of variation, very narrow emission in, in solution. In thin film, because of aggregation, we show the broad emission. So, we make the device. We found that the external quantum efficiency is uh, coming 31 percentage and 22 percentage in case of phenotoxin and phenoxazin. So, this 32 percentage is the first ever reported in solution process. We're trying to make a patent out of this compound. Of course, we use this one for rubidin uh, as a sensitizer. We found that with rubidin and without rubidin, with, without, uh, without our compound, it's 4.8. But when you have our component 17.5 or 15.1, which is also a good number as a sensitizer, it is can be used. So I completed my first part of uh, my presentation. Now I'm going to talk about uh, a few uh, minutes. I'll talk about the inorganic phosphor. This project is supported by Naval Research Board, DRDO. We know that the solid state lighting is nothing but a solid state device that produces light. So the 20 percentage of the electricity that used for lighting worldwide can be uh, reduced minimum. Hence, energy efficient and environment friendly light can be used. Substantial reduction carbon light pollution can be, you know, reduced. And the LED traffic light already been, you know, incorporated. The electricity saving is almost 95 percentage. You can see here when you start with the bulb, now we end up with a you, you know, gallium nitrate LED, which gives uh, 200 lumens per watt, because 100 lumens per watt is your, I know, 109, so 80 to 90 lumens per watt, your CCFL or CFL, compact fluorescent lamp or ca cold cathode fluorescent lamp that we are using as a small bulbs in our home. But in a tungsten bulb, it is around 5 lumens per watt. So that means we are losing a lot of uh, energy as a waste heat. So when you use LED, you get a, a very nice lumens output. So the inorganic phosphor is nothing but a, a phosphor that emits light. For example, you, you take a CAWO4, okay. CAWO4 itself is emitting blue light because of the oxygen tungsten charge sensor. When you, the emission comes from tungsten orbital, D orbital to P orbital of oxygen, so which gives emission. But you add few percentage of European 3 plus ion in the lattice CAWO4, which gives red color. European 3 plus is known to emit in red color because of 4 of 4 of electronic transition. So we can also use the sensitizer as a tungstate, which is the host sensitizer that can transfer the energy. We can get an emission. That basically it is a host sensitizer luminescence. Okay. The configuration coordinate diagram shows that. The electron goes to the upper and comes here, then come to the ground state by emitting photon. The commercial LED, blue LED, combined with the passport, we get a white light emission, which has a 25 lumens per watt, 20 milliamps. The CRA value is 75 to 80%. So need to have a good number of red emitters in this region so that you can get a good emission, good white emission. So uh, fortunately, 2014, the Nobel Prize in Physics has been discovered, uh, distributed to Shuji, Nakumara, Amono, Ak Akshak, Akashaki. These are the three Japanese who shared this Nobel Prize in 2014. As I told you, that there are three ways one can able to harvest white light. The blue LED combined with the yellow emitter, that is known now in our commercial LED, which is the, you know, uh, uh, Bantar, 
already commercialized with as modest color quality. You can also combine yellow and red emission with the blue LED. We can produce, but there are no good emitter red region. And you can also have a UV LED which combine RBG passport, which is attractive, but it's need to have a new generation of passport. But in a straightforward method, one can able to combine all LEDs and you can get an emission white light, but it's very expensive. There are challenges required to have a complex drive and control circuitivity. So as I mentioned, a new red passport, which is essential to improve the overall efficacy of LEDs. Deeper ready improves uh, CRI, shallow ready improves the luminous and efficacy. Possible to gain luminous efficacy 20 to 35% by replacing the broadband red emitter by narrow band red emitter. That is what we are doing last 10 years in our laboratory. So narrow band emitters are this is limited, but broadband is also limited. So Arjun need to find a red power which is stable and efficient. There are some passport which are known to emit in the red region, but whose lumens of output is more. In the case of European 2 plus, and uh, it is good. However, the width of the peak is very uh, more. Full width at half maximum is more. So the goal is to increase the luminous and efficacy. So how to do that? So by replacing the broadband emitters, one by narrow band emitters, one can gain 35 percentage of uh, luminous and efficacy. So among all ranthrites, so Europium is better. Somewhere in 3 plus also some was extent, but due to this concentration quenching, so you will not get a good emission from somewhere in 3 plus. This is what is known as cross relaxation. So when the photon goes from 6H5 by 2 to uh, 6F9 by 2, the emission comes from G5 by 2 to 6 5 by 2 for 9 by 2. The both the emissions are very similar and there is a cross relaxation. As we know already, there are two types of emission. This transition, electronic transitions are possible in case of lanthanides. One is 4 of 4 of electronic transition, other is 4 of 5D electronic transition. The example is Ethereum 3 plus and European 2 plus. Here it's a Samarian 3 plus and Neodym 3 plus and European 3 plus. The four electrons are very narrow because it's shielded by 5D and 6 6 6S orbital. And whereas the 5D electrons interaction with the host lattice is larger and hence you get a very, very, very broad emission. The weak influence by host, weak vibrani coupling is possible. The strong vibrani coupling is there in the cerium 3 plus and European 2 plus. That means the crystal field is involved here. And then the spectral width is very narrow here. Whereas the spectral width is 1000 centimeter inwards. 4 of 4 of transitions are forbidden one, whereas 4 of 5D electronic transitions are allowed one. In case of European 3 plus ion, this is the European 3 plus ion, simple energy level, which has some hypersensitive transition, which deeply or strongly depends on the local site symmetry of the European 3 plus ion present in there. For example, CAWO4. CAWO4 calcium is coordinated with eight oxygen atom. Small calcium amount we can remove by European 3 plus ion. So we can get uh, mm, we can get uh, emission uh, from the European 3 plus ion uh, by uh, because it is located in the eight coordination with having non-center of symmetric side. And hence we can get the electric dipole transition with the red one here, 5D0 to 7 up to. The orange emission magnetic dipole transition is higher, 5D0 to 7 of 1, when the electrons are present, I mean, the, when the European 3 plus ion present the perfect center of symmetric site. Of course, you can have a n number of compounds that can be used as an anion or cation combination. The choice of cations have been given here, scantium, titanium, any compounds that can be used, which is a pink one. In case of anion, we can use the uh, Aluminium, silicate, phosphate, gallic, germinate, titanate, vanadate, molybdate, manganate, everything can be used to make a uh, you know compound. What could be the longest goal? We should have a high quantum efficiency, well matched with the LED emission, appropriate feel a PL lifetime jaluria. We need to have a good CI index, stability in the under UV 360 nanometer and heat. 200 degrees C and time is more important. It to be non-toxic and low production cost should be there. So we made some design principle. 
So we have a, a incident photon observed by the oxygen metal charge transfer and transfer the European three plus ion. We get an emission. If the host is containing of molybdate with having four coordination, we get an emission with this less absorption. Whereas if you have a six coordination, it can absorb little more photons. In addition, European rich center. Suppose if I increase the European number in the lattice, there will be obviously, instead of coming to the ground state, the European 3 plus emission, it migrates towards one European to other European, one European to other European like this. But in case of layer structure, well separated European, European ions are present and hence we can get the emission without concentration quenching. Okay. There is a possibility organic molecule can also be used as an energy harvested for lanthanide. It's called organometallic complexes. European complexes can be used for this purpose. So this paper is the invited article in Dalton transaction, which is under revision. As I told you, the absorption is due to oxygen to uh, charge sensor band, and the emission comes from the European 3 plus ion. European 3 has a simple energy level, which has uh, the magnetic dipole transition is higher. When, when the European ion present in the center of symmetric side, the magnetic dipole transition is dominant. When it comes to the non-center of symmetric side, we get the electric dipole transition higher, which is called hypersensitive transition. Of course, I have told you already with the example I'm telling here, AG, GDMO4, where molybdenum surrounded with a four, uh, four, uh, four oxygen atom. Whereas in the case of uh, you know sodium GdMg WO6, where tungsten is located in the octahedral side, octahedral side is having good absorption. This blue color you can see, but as tetrahedra has poor absorption. So this is the difference between the tungsten and I mean shielded structure, which is this one with having tungsten molybdenum in the four coordination. Whereas perovskite structure we have a six coordinated site, so that can be used to get a, a light here. Also, one can see that if I have a structure different, seven crystal system, we know cubic, orthorhombic, monoclinic, tetragonal, uh, <clears throat> trigonal, orthorhombic, uh, sorry, uh, monoclinic, uh, uh, cubic, tetragonal, orthorhombic, monoclinic, trigonal, uh, triclinic, and then one more is um, hexagonal. These are the seven crystal system. When you change the crystal system also, there is a possibility in changing the uh, emission intensity. For example, in pseudo-cubic, it is only perfectly magnetic dipole transition is dominant. When you go to the orthorhombic, both the emissions are possible. When you go to monoclinic structure, only red emission is possible. Okay, so in case of uh, organometallic complex also can be synthesized and used as a red, red component for uh, in a LED. Of course, in photosystem synthesis, we know that the photosynthesis occurs like this. So you have, uh, these are the wavelength solar spectrum gives. So if we have a spectral composition control through the use of different PASPAR, so one can use photosynthesis this light. So 730 nanometer LED flower, flower initiator. So this is a component that can be used for your uh, artificial photosynthesis. Okay, so this type of LED people are putting, one can have a harvester inside, then the light, the naturally takes, instead of the artificially takes and grow the thing. So there are certain materials that have been used, this one, the European 3 plus, for Pythagorean C, they incorporated. We also did some work. So we taken Li3, uh, uh, LN3, uh, BASR, MO4, eight times. So we got published in Dalton transaction, this one, inorganic chemistry, which crystallizes in the monoclinic structure and having MO for tetrahedra. Space group is C2 by C. And you have a charge sensor spectrum and European 3 plus line. And you get an emission only pure red emission. And also when you increase the concentration up to three, so you get a energy migration is there. There is no self quenching occurs. That means when you excite valence band to conduction band goes electron, it transfers to the European 3 plus ion. So you can also see that the symmetry is not there. European 3 plus ion located unsymmetrical environment and hence you get a red emission. So when you coming to the concept, you have the layer structure, which has a critical distance of, you know, 5.144. 
So on ends, we don't get a concentration quenching. And when you have Arrhenius equation, when you increase the temperature from the 100 degree to 250 degree, our compound is very stable. The CA color code shows it's a pure red color. And we fabricated the LED by combining this. But uh, we got a red. When you combine with the yellow, we get uh, uh, emission which is improved. And also when you combine with the pytochrome or we get an absorption here and hence one can use this light for plant growth application. In order to widen this emission width, what we did is that we combined samarium 3 plus in this lattice. So samarium 3 plus and European 3 plus combination, which gives a very broad uh, emission, which can match up with the black one, PR absorption, we get a good emission. So we can have this type of thing in our mind. So similarly, you have uh, another shielded structure, uh, sodium gadolinium, sodium gadolinium structure. Excuse me one minute. I'm sorry, there's a phone call. Sodium strontium yttrium, where European 3 plus is substituted here, which crystallizes in the tetragonal structure, having the space group of I41 by 8. So, this crystal structure containing strontium and uh, yttrium and sodium coordinated with 8 oxygen atom, whereas the molybdenum coordinated with the 4 oxygen atom. What we found is that when you increase the concentration of the europium up to one, we don't find any concentration quenching. The color purity is good, the lifetime is good, and the color, it's a pure red color we get. So this is because when you see GDG, yttrium yttrium distance, it's around 3.9 in this axis, whereas the, across the layer it is 9.06, whereas the europium distance also it is 9.12 angstrom. So this prevents the energy migration between the europium to europium. And hence we get a non-concentration quenching. We coined this name as a zero concentration quenching in the paper. And when you have this 77% it is retaining its emission intensity when you increase the temperature from room temperature to 400K. And when you fabricate the white LED, it shows 79% of CRI and the red LED also is promising one. So it shows the you know sharp red emission. We can also use them for the fingerprint application. This one. So we get our compound, which is a white color. Under UV lamp, uh, it shows the 254 nanometer this color. 365, we get a very nice color. So that means it can be used for lateral fingerprint application also. So I like to thank our group. Uh, the most of the work that has been done. Uh, by blue is done by Intaka Malam and uh, Jaipal. And the later part of the work has been done by Marikumar. And I thank the Inspire, SCRB, DST for funding and recently IIT Hyderabad. And I thank you very much for your kind uh, attention as well as the patience that you retain. Thank you very much, sir. A very, very wonderful talk today. Thank you. Uh, so what is the procedure uh, to do research or to get a PhD uh, in your institution, sir? Either NIT or IIT? Both of them, we need to have a GATE or CSIR. Same. Okay. okay. So okay, that's sir. the main thing. If you have these both, you have an interview. Then you will get a first two years, 31,000. Another three years, you will get a 35,000. Okay. As a scholarship. Any other uh, research projects uh, is eligible for the PG students after they completed PG? Is there any project they can do other than PhD? That is depends on the faculty, that interest of the student, you know, that is possible, is there. But... Um, uh, I strongly advise them to, you know, get into PhD 
uh, that is better rather than coming for project. Of course, if they have a vision to go to abroad or they have wanted to go to other institutes, project also is better option. One can, you know, learn things. Yes, sir. I think some Dr. Ra Logadurai. Logadurai. Yes, sir. Um, uh, it was a very nice talk. Uh, actually, I have a very basic or general question about this uh, uh, functional materials. Uh, you spoke about this uh, organic. Uh, 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 molecules separately and then inorganic uh, phosphorus and other molecules separately. Uh, recently, this uh, new class of materials are coming up, right? Metal organic frameworks like that, where you use yes, yes, inorganic yes. as well as organic moieties together. Yes, yes. So uh, how about that kind of th those class of materials uh, for your uh, 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 application? Because like people, are, uh, people are using MMOF actually as a light emitting material. But I think... Uh, there's a control is very difficult in my opinion, MOF synthesis, in the sense that uh, one is to two and then you get a crystals, etc. But the straightforward synthesis is this type of compounds, you get a reaction and then do that you need to have, uh, you know, MOF, you need to have hydrothermal reactions, etc. And maybe the control of uh, the moiety, maybe I have no idea, but that may be a disadvantage. Yeah. So, any other questions? Dear participants, do you have any questions to ask? So you can write to me an email. I'm just putting ah, yes, my sir. email ID. Yes, sir. If anyone you can, is having send your uh, email ID in the chat box. Sir. Yeah, I can put it here. If anyone wanted to contact, they can reach me. Okay, my phone number is this. So suppose if you have a talk, then one can able to reach me. No problem. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shakila, and your, you know, colleagues and the student, and then your management. So wonderful time I had. I think someone is raising hand. Uh, already asked the person and they said the logo to raise sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I invite Ms. Durga to give the vote of thanks. Daphne to Anandal present here. Today I feel in the vote of thanks on this auspicious occasion. On behalf of our department, I would like to propose a vote of thanks. First and foremost, I extend my gratitude to our most respected management, Secretary Sir, I wholeheartedly thank our most respected principal, Dr. M. Inbavali Ma'am, for her constant support guidance and encouragement throughout this program. Thank you, ma'am. Further, I thank our beloved PRO, Ms. B. Shaktimala, ma'am, for endless support in all aspects. Thank you, ma'am. Therefore, I want to extend my warm gratitude and hearty congratulations to our chief guest, Dr. Vaityanathan Sivakma, sir, Associate Professor, Department of Chemistry, National Institute of Technology, Raurkila, Odisha. Thank you very much, sir, for taking out your valuable time and ensuring your presence here. We feel enlightened and believe that 
we got learn many things from this webinar words would fall short of describing how much knowledge we could derive from this webinar thank you sir next i extend my whole hearty gratitude to our hod dr d shakila ma'am for organizing this event thank you ma'am i also thank all the faculties of our department for organizing this event thank you ma'am and i would also like to thank all the heads and faculties of various departments for their support thank you ma'am and i would like to thank the technical team murthy sir suresh sir and dinesh sir for their technical arrangements throughout this program thank you sir i convey my hearty thanks to all the participants of today's webinars thank you all for your kind cooperations once again i thank you all thank you once again for the chief guest of the morning session and the evening session and dear participants the feedback link will be sent to your uh, registered mail id tomorrow and you can download your uh, certificate on filling the feedback link thank you yeah dr sakila thank you i'll leave huh? ah yes sir okay sir thank, thank you, you thanks so much for your ah. invitation and, and thank uh, you sir we'll meet sometime yeah thank you so much oh okay sir thank you